As you guys probably noticed, I'm incredibly far away from you guys in terms of the viewpoint for the camera. So today, let's take a look at a vehicle that is gargantuanly huge. This is uh, GMC's redesigned 2015 Yukon Denali full-size truck-based SUV. Now this thing has been in the United States in some form of way for the last 80 years. It's spawned through 12 generations. Now if you guys are going to just go back to the Yukon name, it goes back to about 1992 and the, the Denali name is kind of like a luxury line of GMC. That's been around since 1998. Now this all new, plot, this all -new truck is basically uh, based on the all new Silverado slash Sierra platform. I've shown you guys a 2014 uh, Chevrolet Silverado review and this is basically just the SUV version. It, it uh, is part of a dying breed or at least was dying uh, in terms of large full-size truck-based SUVs and um, for 2015, actually, the segment itself is getting revitalized. You know, GM is showing us this new Yukon, which I'm showing you, this the Tahoe, and then of course Cadillac just rolled out the Escalade version, and then Ford finally has just updated the uh, Expedition and Navigator dinosaurs. But, anyways, I've got the Yukon Denali. This kind of represents the pinnacle of the more plebeian Chevy and GM lines or GMC lines. Cadillac Escalade kind of is in a separate review. It's above there in terms of glitz and glam. Now, you can see the design of this vehicle has been completely altered. Um, you can still kind of see, I mean, it still looks like the previous generation. This is actually the fourth generation of the uh, Yukon name. Now, this car is actually available in three different trims. There's the base SLE, mid-level SLT, and then this top grade Denali. Now, the Denali kind of rolls in some unique styling elements. You can see at the front, um, every Yukon will have the LED daytime running lights, the signature LED running lights. The Denali rolls in the HID headlights, uh, the big flashy chrome grill, this massive grill that's literally in your face. I mean, you might as well just get the Escalade, to be honest, if, this, if you like this look. Now, in terms of the size of this thing, it's about an inch and a half longer in wheelbase for the previous model. Overall length is about two inches longer. It's still about almost seven feet tall. This thing is gigantic, so make sure this thing will fit in your garage. And, you know, if this is not big enough for you, you guys can actually go for the XL version, extended length, basically, or extra large, you could call it. Um, that's 20 inches longer in terms of the overall length and about a 15-inch longer wheelbase. So that'll give you a little bit more cargo space in the back. Now looking at the back rear of this vehicle, um, it's a traditional looking truck based SUV. You have the very square profile. It's a box basically. It's maximum utility. I do like the LED tail lights. Um, this integrated spoiler on the back is cool and then GM is also quite proud of the fact that they've hidden the rear wiper uh, above the spoiler for aerodynamic and cleaner look purposes. Of course this one does have the power tailgate option. Of course it doesn't have the, the um, kicking your foot underneath the um, tailgate to open it, but that's okay, it's still a power tailgate. So overall, the design of this vehicle, it's very traditional. I mean, if you're gonna go for this this type of vehicle, basically, you're gonna be a traditional buyer and you're gonna want these this kind of flashy look. Uh, the 22-inch chrome wheels on my tester, uh, that's a $1,000 upgrade. 20s are standing around the Denali. I mean, that's gigantic. It's the largest wheel in the segment. Um, you can get these wheels also on the Tahoe Suburban or the Escalade as well, although the Escalade has its own unique design. And you know, this thing is very big. It's very glitzy. Um, it's very in your face, but you know, some people, you know, really like this design and it's a luxury SUV. It competes head on with vehicles like the Range Rover, the Toyota Land Cruiser, Lexus LX 570, uh, Mercedes uh, GL class. I mean, in terms of, you know, towing something, you know, you would buy something like this as opposed to a car-based SUV because it can tow. This thing will tow about 8,000 pounds, but keep in mind, this thing weighs almost three tons. It's about a 5,700-pound curb weight, so uh, you're not going to be buying this thing for its uh, great gas mileage, although GM did improve the fuel economy for this generation of a uh, truck. Checking out the interior of the all-new Denali, the first thing you're going to notice, an $1,800 option when you open the door, the power deploying running boards actually come down and that's a it's a pretty nice feature to help you get into this vehicle it's extremely tall and extremely hard for shorter people like myself to get in however when you look at this all new interior you can see gm has really elevated the interior quality and brought this uh, truck into the 21st century uh, these uh, very comfortable supportive leather seats uh, come on the denali version i like the contrasting stitching and then of course you're going to get the denali skid plates or kick plates right there now of course stepping in this car you can use the running boards here getting in it's a really high step in height but you know people in this class of vehicle are gonna really appreciate the commanding view of the road um, you can see push to start has finally been added uh, to the feature list and you're gonna get that when you go for the SLT trim and above so basically uh, here's the key for the vehicle just keep this key fob inside uh, the vehicle it's actually the newer style key fob like in the key fob uh, put your foot on the brake and push the button to start the engine 
Now, one of my criticisms still with GM is the fact that they've built two different versions of this, the Tahoe and then the Yukon. You know, in terms of the interior design, um, it's practically identical. The only difference I'm noticing with the steering wheel, the gauges are a slightly different color. Uh, instead of Chevrolet MyLink, they call this in GM, or they call this IntelliLink. It's kind of similar to what Buick calls it, IntelliLink. There's no GMC IntelliLink here at all. Now, um, one of the cool features about this thing is this screen here, this eight inch uh, touchscreen display. It actually does when you push that button it, it actually slides open to reveal a nice little USB port and some storage in there it's all lined in felt very very cool party trick it'll definitely impress your your passengers now in terms of the interior quality the previous generation the GMT 900 platform that's what it was called had a really cheap interior uh, lots of hard plastic everywhere fit and finish was okay but you know this is just completely different you see the dashboard here is leather stitch it even go extends down uh, here and then over the the um, cup holder lid covers here it's actually covered in leather as well it is soft touch right here more leather stitching right here on the hood gauge and then soft touch right there the door panels right here uh, where you're gonna rest your elbows it's leather padded uh, stitched right here and then of course more soft padding right here the windows are actually interesting they're automatic up down uh, for the driver and front passenger automatic down only for the rear I kind of think they should have just made it all four automatic honestly at this price point for this Denali version now uh, you can see getting to the center stack here the two cars are identical save for some real aluminum trim and some real wood grain trim on the, the Denali version if you're going to compare this car to the Tahoe LTZ, which is why I'm kind of finding, finding a hard time with going with this. Personally, it comes down to styling aesthetic. I do like the red gauges on this particular uh, GMC version. And then, of course, for some odd reason, the IntelliLink system in this car, it works a little bit better than the MyLink that I had in the Corvette and the Cadillac Q. You know, the response time is just a little bit quicker, although I do notice it, st it still lags occasionally. Uh, GM says this is supposed to be like a tablet, so you can pinch you can swipe you can zoom it still needs a little bit more beefing up but I did notice it didn't really lag or drag down the performance of you know whenever I pushed a button here as much as the Chevy the Cadillac actually was the worst in terms of lagging so GM still has some work to do with this interface now going to the home screen here of course you're gonna have your choices between different sources here of course you have OnStar when you go to your audio settings here you have your choice between uh, Pandora I'm sorry you have beep you have XM satellite radio AM FM you do have HD radio and and then you saw here you do have Pandora and then the Chevrolet apps in addition to you know, other things here. Now, of course, this vehicle does have tri-zone automatic climate control, heated and cooled seats. The center console here is gigantic. You can basically uh, put your purse or bag in there or laptop computer. Uh, when you look at the glove compartment here, it's actually on the smaller side. Uh, and I'm I am noticing there's a little bit less storage space in this thing versus uh, what you might find in an Expedition, although there is a little bit more storage down here. Now, of course, this car has a six-speed automatic transmission. It's your only transmission pairing. When you put it in reverse, you do have a nice little backup camera. It's kind of necessary, although something this big could use like an around view monitoring system uh, with cameras around 360 degrees. This thing is massively large. And then one of the new features for this car, or this truck, I'm sorry, is the is the driver assistance tech. You're gonna find features like lane departure warning, forward collision warning, the head-up display is nice, uh, adaptive cruise control, that is a, actually a $1,900 option. And then of course, this is a real truck. So you're gonna get you know a trailer brake controller here to tow stuff, a real four-wheel drive system with four high, four low. Of course, with the 22-inch wheels, I wouldn't really wanna take it off-road. Uh, and then of course, this panoramic sun, or I'm sorry, this sunroof, this regular sunroof here is part of a package. It's about 3,000 bucks that actually rolls in the entertainment system in the back. I'll show you guys that when I get into the back seat. Uh, overall, I'm really liking the new interior design of this thing. Uh, the materials are good. It's just not really differentiated enough for my taste from the Chevy version. If you, uh, I'll show you guys the new Escalade one day when I get that to test. And she or Cadillac really just completely changed the exterior and the interior design of their version. Checking out the second row of the uh, GMC Yukon Denali, you can see it's a wonderful place to spend time. Honestly, I wouldn't care if I was in the back seat or the front seat. Uh, you do. Have have plenty of legroom, liking the captain's chairs back here, and then of course you have the same uh, step right here. The materials are also first rate, same soft touch from the, the front seat, so they did carry through over there. Now stepping inside here, the legroom is just plentiful. Um, so, I mean, taller folks are gonna, you know, find it very comfortable. Loving the captain's chairs again with the armrest here. And then, of course, coming to this DVD entertainment system. Um, it's a flip-down screen, obviously. It's not very large. Honestly, it looks like it's about the same size as the screen in the front, and I'm not sure why that's playing. I really don't have a DVD in there. Um, 
guess that's just what was in the vehicle. I don't watch that, of course. Now, um, it's kind of disappointing considering some manufacturers offer like a 16, uh, point, or 16 to 9 widescreen versus this. This is pretty small. They could definitely fit the real estate here. Honestly, a lot of people are now, or a lot of kids have iPads, and that's what most parents are going to. Of course, you have your, steer, or your rear seat controls here, heated rear seats back here as well, only for the second row, however. Accessing the third row seat of this vehicle can be done, you know, either ways. You can either cross right there going through the middle, since it is open, there's no center uh, console there, or you can pull this little lever right here, and you can see the seat flips up pretty easily, and it is hydraulically assisted. Now you can see, I want you to notice something here. The back seat of this thing is not as roomy as GMC's own Acadia. So you guys who are looking for the most in terms of passenger space, you may wanna go for the cross, the car base crossover as opposed to this truck base. The floor is a lot higher because GM still uses a live axle in the back as opposed to the Expedition, its main competitor, uses an independent rear suspension and that helps to lower the floor for uh, space. Now Getting back here, it is a little bit of a circus act, but um, you can see here, the legroom is pretty awful. This is uh, very high in terms of the floor, uh, so you are only going to put small children back here. There is a power outlet here, but the materials, they're pretty hard plastic. Um, honestly, if you guys are going to use the third row for actual adults, I would recommend going for the uh, car-based Acadia instead. Coming to the cargo area, of course, you are going to take advantage of that nice power liftgate function, and the, light, the height of the liftgate is actually adjustable through a control in the front seats. Now, uh, you can see here in terms of cargo space, the regular Yukon is a little bit down uh, or doesn't really offer much behind the third row. You're, you're looking at about nine and a half cubic feet of storage space. Now, one of the new features for this truck or this entire lineup is the fact that the third row actually folds down flat. The previous model, you had to flip the third row up or you had to take it out. And for the because of the or the fold flat nature of this uh, new third row, the, um, the cargo capacity is reduced. So, I mean, pushing these switches here, when you fold down the third row seat, you're looking at about uh, 40 cubic feet of space. Fold down the second row, which can be done right there as well, uh, which provides sort of a flat floor. This is gonna provide about 95 cubic feet of space. That's roughly 10 cubic feet less than the old model, which had the seats that had to be removed. Uh, if you're gonna go, if you need a little bit more space, I would recommend going for the XL, the extended length. That'll offer about 130 uh, cubic feet of storage space. Checking out what's going on underneath this massive hood is one of the reasons why you may also go for the Yukon version as opposed to the Tahoe slash Suburban. Uh, this is a unique engine to the Denali version only. The SLE and SLT terms have the same 5.3 liter small block V8 with uh, which is basically the same engine in the Chevrolet Silverado that I showed you. Uh, that engine has been updated with uh, variable valve timing, direct injection, cylinder deactivation. However, this is the big motor. This is the same, basically the same engine in the Chevrolet Corvette, the C7 vet, and the Escalade also has its own version of this engine. This is the 6.2 liter V8. Uh, same thing, variable valve timing, direct fuel injection, cylinder deactivation. The numbers are much better, 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque, which is up from the 403 and 417 of the uh, 2014 model. Now, fuel economy with this all, with this four-wheel drive model is 14 in the city, 21 on the highway. Go up to 15, 21 if you guys go for two-wheel drive, but why would you do that? Why would you get this thing with two-wheel drive? It seems kind of pointless to me. Uh, this does run on regular gas. Uh, Chevy, I believe, or I'm sorry, GMC recommends you put premium for maximum performance. The 5.3 only runs on regular, uh, and that's rated a little bit better gas mileage, 1622. However, this thing weighs about 5,700 pounds, about 100 pounds more than the old model. It's paired through that six-speed automatic. It's the only transmission available. So let's take a look at how it all works together. Driving one of these big old dinosaurs really is kind of an acquired taste. You really need to be good at driving a vehicle that is literally like a living room on wheels. This thing is gigantic. You feel it the moment you step behind the wheel, just how tall it is, just how wide it is. However, GM's done a really good job with um, making this thing drive very, very nicely. Let's take a look and see how it does. Now, one of the things I'm definitely noticing is just how much more torque this 6.2 liter V8 has over the 5.3. I drove it briefly in the uh, Tahoe and of course the Silverado, and I definitely feel that increased torque this bigger V8 gives you. Uh, another thing that I'm noticing is just the improved refinement of this all new truck. It is much more quiet. The ride is pretty uh, isolated, pretty comfortable, despite the fact that my tester has these massive 22 inch uh, wheels. Now, 
Now, despite the uh, increased power of the 6.2 over last year's model, uh, I don't really feel it that, or feel this truck to be any quicker than the 14 model. I mean, I've driven uh, the previous GMT 900 trucks multiple times, mostly with the 5.3, uh, and I have to see the, the weight of this truck is increased by 100 pounds, 200 pounds in some instances, and you kind of feel it around the six-speed automatic has been tuned for fuel economy. So I was kind of disappointed when I first drove this thing. It feels like maybe like a zero to 60 time of around seven and a half seconds. I expected it to be quicker, to be honest, uh, just because this is the same engine in the VET. Of course, this is moving around twice the weight, but nevertheless, most buyers are gonna find the power to be pretty uh, torquey and uh, just about enough power for them. Now, when you're just kind of cruising along in the all new Yukon, you're gonna feel the improved refinement immediately. Uh, most buyers are gonna love the commanding view of the road of this thing. You kind of just feel like the king of the road. It's one of the reasons why a lot of people still buy this thing. And the ride quality is so good in this thing is because uh, it has the third generation of GM's excellent magnetic ride control suspension. Although the 22 inch wheels with the th really thin sidewalls, they do kind of affect the ride quality a little bit. Uh, you will feel some bumps, hard bumps crash into the cabin. However, um, the steering for this truck, it's very light. It's very easy to drive, um, despite the fact that you've just got to get used to just how much mass you're, you're really pulling around. But you know, going around this tiny back road right here, I don't particularly find this thing difficult to drive. Some of it really depends on how comfortable you are with skinny roads like this in a vehicle that's about 80 inches wide. Now you can see here, um, the head up display on my tester is really nice. It's basically the same one you'll find in a lot of GM products. And of course this one does have some new driver assistance technology that the previous one just didn't even offer. Um, it does have the forward collision warning, lane departure warning, the safety alert seat. So this thing will vibrate the bolster of the seat or vibrate the seat in general if you're gonna get in trouble. Um, this one also has the adaptive cruise control with the low speed follow, so it will follow the traffic in front of you. The only thing it's really missing is lane active lane keeping assist. The Cadillac CTS didn't have it either. Uh, however, some other manufacturers are going to that. GM, for some reason, hasn't really gone to the active steering technology just yet. Now, in terms of quietness, this thing is immensely quiet. I mean, this is the perfect family vehicle, and it's definitely one of the reasons why. I mean, it appeals to families. It's got a very roomy, spacious interior. Let's face it, people in America, we like our space. Um, it's got a pretty comfortable ride. It's got a lot, of, a big commanding view of the road, and then also all the luxury and tech that most families could really offer or really want. So that's the reason why uh, this thing really appeals to a lot of families. But, you know, going around this back road right here, this is not this truck's, you know, preferred area. Uh, it doesn't do bad. The steering is very light. doesn't offer much uh, in terms of feedback, but it's not dangerous or anything. It doesn't feel scary. Um, and then, of course, when you put your foot down, I love the growl from that V8, that 6.2 V8. It's a nice subdued growl, not too loud, not too in your face, not like the Corvette, at least. Now the six-speed automatic does shift smoothly enough. However, I'm surprised that GM didn't want to go to an eight-speed transmission for this car or this truck. I mean, it's very possible they may update it uh, with a new transmission when they start uh, developing it for this engine, especially since the Corvette basically has the same version. We'll look at an eight-speed automatic later. I think it uh, it could be worth it to them just because I'm feeling the six-speed and it seems to always want to stay in its top gear. It could use another gear or two, especially to increase the fuel economy and uh, the acceleration of this truck. I'm definitely feeling the uh, transmission's reluctance to downshift when I'm going up these hills. It constantly stays in its overdrive gear and you really have to bury your foot into the throttle uh, to get this thing to downshift. And it feels a little gutless unless the tack goes above 2000 RPM. So I really do think that uh, GM needs to work on the transmission tuning. It's just been tuned way too much for fuel economy, way too much to get that, uh, that 21 MPG highway rating. Again, for most buyers, uh, the, the power is going to be mostly adequate for this thing. It's just not gonna blow your mind away. And it does feel a little bit sluggish, especially when you have the AC on and then the passenger, or the cabin is filled with passengers. So, um, you know, coming to the conclusion of this review, I must say that I'm pretty impressed with this all new uh, GMC Yukon and the Tahoe, tr basically the siblings. Um, the old model was really lagging. It was really feeling dated. This thing definitely feels like it's, you know, part of the 21st century now, the updated technology interface, the IntelliLink system looks pretty cool. 
love the screen, love the seats, love the refinement in this thing. The V8 makes a good noise. I mean, then of course it's got the, the nice space in the back. However, if you guys are looking for an actual crossover that carries a little bit more cargo room uh, and a little bit more space in the third row, I must just say, look at the Chevrolet Traverse or the GMC Acadia, basically GM's own car-based version. They are actually better in terms of cargo space, which offer the Traverse and Acadia offer about 116 cubic feet, and it offers way more legroom in the back. You do have to go up to the EXL version, which is gigantic. It's a freaking beast uh, trying to drive the longer one, which is about 20 inches longer than this, this one, as I said before. So with all that said, I mean, the only reason why you would buy this class of vehicle is because for one, you like the idea of driving around a real truck. This is a real body on frame truck with a live axle in the back. Uh, you like the big glam glitz version of this. This is kind of more of a masculine vehicle as opposed to the car based versions are kind of more feminine vehicle. For me, I personally could care less. Uh, I'm gonna drive a vehicle that's more uh, functional or makes sense functionally. And this to me doesn't really make sense. It's the reason why I don't really particularly see this class of car uh, heading more upmarket than it is now. I mean, I'm very surprised to see uh, the American manufacturers and even some Japanese, you know, entering this segment again, but it still sells in pretty good numbers and there's a reason why it sells so well. People are just about the flashiness and that's what uh, you basically get when you go for this type of vehicle as opposed to a traditional car base unit. So with all that said, if you're gonna be in, if you must buy a vehicle in this class, uh, the GM versions are, I believe, to be the top of the class. Uh, if you're gonna go for luxury versions, uh, of course, the Escalade was just redesigned. The Infiniti QX80 is also a nice choice. And then of course, there's the traditional Land Cruiser LX570 uh, for those of you who wanna go for um, something that's a little bit, um, well known in terms and has a lot of off-road heritage like those vehicles but um you know in terms of what i think is wrong with this car there's not really much um some of the technology the intellilink could use some beefing up again the automatic transmission could use a reprogram it's always wanting to stay in its top gear for fuel economy and affects acceleration and then of course the price i do have my issue with the price of this thing you know it starts at forty six thousand bucks which makes it a little bit more on the expensive end the expedition starts at about forty one thousand the sequoia starts at about forty four thousand now my particular Denali tester is Sticker Shocker. Uh, it's basically got every option available um, and it's stickers for just over 75,000 bucks. Now that was a shocker one up to me again when I saw it. A uh, loaded expedition is about 61,000 for a King Ranch with everything. But then again, this has a much better engine, much better ride and handling. Um, much better in uh, technology, uh, and I do like the styling of this one, as opposed to the dated Expedition, even the 2015 refresh models. I'll wait until I get one to test uh, to save judgment on that. However, you know, if you guys wanted to go for uh, the Tahoe version, for a loaded LTZ, it's about 71 grand, so you are saving about $4,000. Honestly, I do like the styling aesthetic of the GMC version more, so I probably would recommend it. Uh, if you guys wanna go even further beyond that, the Escalade's about 85,000 for a fully loaded model. So again, these things are not cheap, you buy them because they are a little bit show-offy and they should kind of have their own little brand prestige and uh a presence to them. Anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed my overview of the redesigned 2015 GMC Yukon Denali. If you're in the market for a vehicle of this caliber, make sure you put one on your list. It's definitely a tops in the class in a relatively small class. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next review.